I'm Greg Jarrett, and you are in the strategy room. The terrorist group ISIS is moving closer to expanding its control further into Iraq and now even Libya. At the same time, State Department spokeswoman Marie Harf said in an interview with Chris Matthews, we can't win, quote, by killing them. Joining us now with reaction are political strategists Lee Carter and Jessica Tarloff. Welcome to both of you. It is Thank on so many different levels. This remark by the State Department spokesperson is is uh, remarkable. Um, <laughs> so let's put it up on the screen to examine it. And the latter part is the most important. We're killing a lot of them. We're going to keep killing most of them, more of them. So are the Egyptians, Jordanians. They're in this fight with us, but we cannot win this war by killing them. We cannot kill our way out of this war. We need in the medium to longer term to go after the root causes that leads people to join these groups, whether it's a lack of opportunities for jobs, whether, and then she was interrupted by Chris Matthews, who never does that. Uh, Lee, the State Department spokesperson is saying, killing them isn't going to do it. We need to give them good jobs. <laughs> does that make any sense, or does that show a stunning lack of knowledge and competence? Listen, I think every word that comes out of their mouth matters. And I think this belittles what's going on. We're talking about sociopaths who are beheading people. This isn't, you know, this isn't anything, I mean, it would be like saying, you know what, let's give Charles Manson a job and I bet he's going to be okay. It's like saying we're going to take death row criminals who are psychopaths give them jobs and they're going to reform. It's just not true, and I think it belittles the whole strategy that they're laying out for us. What do you think, Jessica? I, I think it was, um, we were discussing this earlier, actually, I think you used the term tone deaf. I think that it was tone deaf on Harf's, uh, on Harf's part, and we've heard this also um, from the president, but I, I think that what needed to happen is a separation of a immediate strategy, which is to kill a lot of people, and then a long-term strategy, which is to make sure that we can at some point end this vicious cycle, right? Um, and I think that that's the tact that we employed in Afghanistan as well, which to varying degrees has had some, some success to build up the civil, so civil society, I'm sorry, and the economy and things like that. Um, so you I could dangle jobs in front of these bloodthirsty people and they don't care, do they? I mean, seriously. Right at this moment, because they're winning. At but any we're moment, talking about, aren't they know, just perpetually well, we don't know. maniacal? I mean, Yes, the ones who are active right now, but we're talking about, and I think what she was speaking to is the long-term recruitment of right. these people. I mean, we're seeing thousands, tens of thousands of people coming to these causes on a, even a monthly basis. And I think she's talking about the long-term systemic effect. Well, since our strategy has been to kill through tactical airstrikes ISIS uh, members, isn't this Marie Harf, the spokeswoman for the State Department, publicly disagreeing with the president's strategy, essentially saying it's wrong. I think so. And I think right now it's completely out of touch with what we need to hear right now. People are afraid. People are angry. I mean, they're attacking Christians. They're attacking Jewish folks. They're attacking all Americans. They're attacking people all over the world. And to say that let's go over and give them jobs is absolutely insane. This mass murder of Coptic Christians from Egypt happened in Libya. Is this right. now a sign that the global jihad is spreading to the rest of the Arab world? Yeah, I think it absolutely is, and I think this is something that can, could have been predicted, and I think... It, well, the president called it a JV squad, so yeah, apparently he That was a while ago. I think now he would have upgraded them to varsity. I mean, I, I think that it, it was an initial mistake to use those kinds of terms and to treat it so flippantly. But I think really what needs to be happening right now is that the president needs to stand shoulder to shoulder with Arab leaders who are taking on this threat and to say, whatever you need, we've got your back. This but idea that, I mean, because Marie Harf also said in the statement that, you know, the leaders of Jordan and Egypt are joining us, but the truth of the matter is, is that we need to be joining them. And they are being more aggressive, they're more on top of the threat, and I mean, it's neighborly for them. I mean, we can sit back right. and it, it's, it's on our, it's going on in America, it's going on in Western Europe, but not nearly to the same A degree. recent Fox News poll found that 73% of Americans think that Obama has no clear strategy for defeating ISIS. Is this essentially saying, Mr. President, you don't really know what you're doing. I think absolutely. I think he admitted it himself. He said, I have no clear strategy. And so every time he gets out there, he's not laying out a framework. He's not laying out a vision. And I think people are angry. They're upset. They want to see leadership, and he hasn't given it to us. Is this a president who is so obsessed with the legacy of pulling out of two wars, he doesn't want any involvement with something that may even look 
like a war in going after ISIS. I don't think so. I mean, just last week he asked for military authorization, right? I mean, to increase it. I'm not saying there are troops no on the ground, ground right now. Wasn't not right now, but there there is open purview that things could change. I, I mean, I think the president does like that he has pulled us out of these wars, but we've also had to go back in a little bit. So it, I, I think that that's wrongheaded. I think the president, first and foremost, does care about the safety but of with Americans. putting so many limits on his request for authorization of military force. Is wasn't that he, his fault? Wasn't he laying out a plan of essentially, here's what we're not going to do, instead of what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. well, what do you think, <laughs> Lee? I think so. I mean, I think he keeps putting limits on it, and then he goes over and changes those limits. And what happens is people lose confidence. He has to admit and acknowledge when he said, I made a mistake, and this is what's where we are right now, and this is what I'm going to do about it. It makes him seem weak, and he keeps defending his, defending his previous position rather than saying, this is what we're going to do going forward. Well, and the president a week ago today, February 11, said a ground war is not necessary to defeat ISIS. That was his speech. That was his speech, and I hope that that is the case. But I think that there is that naive. Is that naive? I don't, I don't know if I want to use the word naive, but I, I think it might be a little idealistic <laughs> to, say, to, to think that we can get out of here like that. Because what they're doing is on the ground, right? You can't burn someone from the air. You're going to do it right to their face, and that's how beheadings work. And I'm not saying I certainly don't want us to be doing things like that. Um, but we may have to see some face-to-face -face combat, and the president needs to be ready for that. In a brutal war uh, of terrorism, is there room for that kind of idealism in the Oval Office, Lee? No, absolutely not. I think this is barbaric times, and it, there's just no way that we can be idealistic at this point in time. And I think one of the problems is we keep seeing him say the same thing, no troops. And if he says anything about troops, it's always with caveats. And I think people are saying, you know what? You can't keep defending your position. You can't keep being defensive. It's not about whether or not you are right or wrong. It's about what's right for America right now. And that's what he needs to be focused on. But to that point, I mean, people, yes, 73% say that he doesn't have a clear plan. And I think 66% still say that they think there's going to be an attack on American soil. But Americans still don't want a ground war. So this is one of those cases. I mean, Bill Clinton talked about it, about a decision that he made while he was in office well, where he said, I had to go against the polling, right? Boots I mean, on the ground doesn't necessarily mean an extensive ground war in the conventional right. no, sense. I got well, to leave it here. I'm, boots on the I'm ground. out of time. Jessica Tarlov, Lee Carter, good to see you both. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank you. For more on this developing story, stay with foxnews.com. I'm Greg Jarrett. Thanks for watching.